Welcome to an all new episode of Get Lit with Leanna, the podcast. Join me as I sit down with a new guest author in each episode to discuss their books, careers, and everything in between. Today, I'm sitting down with author Kayla Olson, who wrote the new rom-com, The Reunion. When I first read the synopsis of this book, I knew I was going to love it because it encompasses all of my favorite things, a love story, a second chance romance, and a celebrity. Then when I got my hands on the book and opened it to the dedication, and it had a line about how the book was for anybody who loved Topanga from Boy Meets World and her hair, I was like, okay, this is actually made for me because Boy Meets World, as so many of you know, is legit my favorite show of all time. So I was so excited to have Kayla on the podcast to talk about this book. I got to ask her about her inspiration behind the story, about some of my favorite moments of the book, what it was like to write the story, and of course what she has planned to next for us. So without further ado, my conversation with romance author Kayla Olson starts right now. Welcome Kayla to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. I feel like the reunion has been one of those books that everyone has been buzzing about since the the cover came out. I feel like that's when I first heard of it. That's when so many people first heard of it. So I'm so excited to have you here and to chat about this book. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much for having me. And oh my gosh, when I got the cover, I just about cried with happiness because I just love the sunset colors so much. And there's so many like sunsets and sunrises in the book. It just felt so perfect. So yeah, I would love to talk to you a little bit more actually about the cover art. But before we get into that, I would love to first know more about you and your history as a writer. I know that The Reunion isn't your first book, but it is different from your other writing. So like, tell me a little bit about your history, your background, how this all kind of started. Yeah. So this is not my first book. Like you said, my first two published novels were young adult kind of sci-fi survival books is always what I describe them as. Um, One was set on a desert island and one was set on a space station. I always have considered them as like contemporary books set against like a sci-fi backdrop. So in some ways it wasn't like as far of a leap as you would think, but (laughs) you know, definitely is like, you can't get much different from that, you know, writing an adult romance set in Hollywood. So, yeah. um, yeah, when the pandemic hit, I was just like, you know, I've always written books that are basically how bad can our world get in the future <laughs> and exploring that kind of stuff. <laughs> and literally like referred to my space mystery as like space virus book for the whole time I was working on it. And so when the pandemic hit, I was like, you know, like real life is too close to fiction right now. I need yeah. a happy place. And I need just to write something just purely joyful and fun where I can just escape the reality and the stress of the real world. And Mm -hmm. thus a pivot was born. (laughs) A serious pivot. So did you have to split publishing houses? Like what was that whole situation like? So uh, my first two books were with Harper Teen, um, which judging by the teen and the name, like clearly they don't do adult books. And so um, I was really confident that I could make the switch because my literary agents are Holly and Taylor from Root Literary. And um, they have a lot of clients who mm-hmm. just write across genres, like Emily Henry and B.E. Schwab. And so I'd seen their clients kind of go before me on this path mm-hmm. and really thrive with, with an adult in the adult space. And so It's like, okay, I feel like they'll be behind me if I decide to make this pivot and they'll know exactly what to do with it, um, who to send it to. And so um, they were thrilled and I was too when I uh, finally shared. I was like, guys, I've been working on something a little different. Um, Hmm. I hope you can find the perfect home for it. (laughs) And Atria has been absolutely incredible um, to work with and cannot imagine a better team to work with on this book. So it's amazing. Were you on sub for a really long time with this book or it kind of was quick? No, it was pretty fast. Um, The waiting was like trying to get it as good as it could be before we ever got, went out on sub. So I went back and forth with my agents a few times, like, and because they have thrived so well in the adult space, they they have Christina Lauren too, and like (laughs) Sally Thorne and just like this amazing list of romance authors I really trusted my agent's instincts when they were like okay you need to change this you need to change that this is going to position it a little better Mm -hmm. um for editors and for readers in the future and so 
a lot of the waiting was just spent on me <laughs> revising and um, taking their notes to heart and figuring out how to implement their ideas. So yeah. Um, once we went on sub, it was fairly quick. Um, and I was very thankful for that. <laughs> the synopsis of the book, like was it, when the first time I read it, I was like, this is made for me because I'm obsessed with like TV and film. And like, I was just like, this is my favorite, like celebrity romances are just my all time bread and butter favorite thing ever, <laughs> ever, ever. So before we get into the actual, like my favorite parts of the book, your favorite parts of the book, I would love if you could give everybody that's listening, like a brief synopsis about what the reunion's about. Okay, so the way I always pitch it is it's about two former teen actors who played love interests on the same hit TV show. And they were like the best friends off screen and just meant everything to each other. And they kind of grew up together on the show. But on screen, they played love interests. And so when you're growing up kind of for so many seasons in a row, (laughs) I heard about just like, hey, would the line between fiction and reality start to blur a little bit, especially in your adolescent years, like when you're experiencing those feelings, maybe for the first time, I feel like it might be confusing to try and figure out your feelings. So um, the reunion is about how they had an epic falling out, like in their very last season and haven't spoken in 14 years. But now it's a forced proximity situation where they come back with the rest of the cast to film one last reunion episode and are able to just pick up for better and for worse where they left off. So obsessed. The dedication in the beginning of this book, like killed me. And I know you saw I reposted it. I was like, this is made for me. The the Topanga line in particular just like made me die because Boy Meets World is my favorite show. And I got all of the Boy Meets World feels from this book. What shows were like, thank you. Pleasure, pleasure. What shows were your inspiration for this? Like, how did this storyline come to you? It was Boy Meets World. I was doing a rewatch with my husband on Disney Plus. uh, Yeah, as we all have done in the last two years. I think I've watched it probably eight times over. It was the beginning of the pandemic. And I realized, like, I made this discovery that my husband had actually never watched it. (laughs) And I was like, you you are in for a treat. We are watching this whole season, um, this whole series, start to finish. You're welcome. And somewhere around, like, season three or four, I was thinking, you know, wait a minute. Like, they played love interest the entire run of the show. And, like, spoiler alert, they even get married on the show. (laughs) And there's not a lot of shows where like the main characters are in that sort of long-term relationship for that many years. Yeah. Um, you know, go off and on or like between, um, between other love interests or maybe they're adults going through this, like Ross and Rachel, yeah. but like teachers, you know, I thought that was a really intriguing idea to explore. Um, and, I was reading a lot of adult romance at the time. So my mind automatically went to like fast forward, have a reunion mm-hmm. episode. Um, like the friends episode, I think had, it was funny. Cause like I had already written this book when they announced like the, the first reunion. draft, like friends reunion. I was like, yeah. you guys get this to editors like ASAP. Cause this is super timely with the friends reunion. And um, so a little bit friends reunion, a little, a lot bit boy meets world Dawson's Creek. Um, <laughs> friends friendship to more situation I love that like Boy Meets World is my number one comfort show forever and ever like it has been as long as I've been watching TV like it's my number one favorite thing I watched an episode this morning like I just I'm I always have it on it's I love it and I buy uh Topanga Danielle Fischel like she I tagged her in one of my stories with the dedication she actually shared it and I was like this is like the most full circle moment of my entire life like I'm dead. Like, inspiration like I so. love that so much so what was the outlining process like for this book once you had the idea like how did you start putting pen to paper yeah so I am not a big like outline person I I think of it more as like a structural roadmap so I like to have a few points along the way that I'm shooting for um, just to get it, give it some overall structure, but then allow myself the freedom to discover the the specifics as I go, just to keep it kind of fresh in my head. So I'm not like, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to like have this deja vu feeling of like, I've already written the book, but now I have to write the book. Right. <laughs> um, right. So I felt like, you know, the structure of having a few like press scenes, you know, where she's doing interviews and photo shoots um, and red carpet events would be a really fun, like first half of the book. And then the second half she's filming the show and they're all on set together. And it kind of gave a really natural, just like structure to the plot. Um, 
and a natural window into, okay, like she can kind of re get to know Ransom again after all these years and her co-stars who played her sisters also um, just kind of rediscover them as adults. Um, and then I thought it was really fun to work in like some of the screenplay aspects for the second half when they're shooting and kind of have that mirror a little bit, like what's going on in their real lives too. Mm -hmm. There's so many like moments of the book that I really love, but one part that's not really a moment, it's kind of just like a literary technique, I guess, that you used is how you put in like press releases, news stories, blind items. Like I loved having all those other little added like real life pop culture moments to it. Were those fun to write? My background working professionally, I just kind of did a little career pivot, but my background was in PR. So seeing those like press releases and then those like stories that would be like on Deadline or Hollywood Reporter, any of those, I was like, oh, this is my bread and butter. And it's so different than writing fiction, writing for news. Mm -hmm. So what was that like? And did you get any advice, any help for any of that? No, it was, it was some of my most favorite writing sessions, you know, cause you just get to put on, like you were talking about just like a different part of your brain to write yeah. that kind of stuff. And having been a member of the internet community for so <laughs> many years, you know, I, I just kind of pulled on my uh, experience reading those sort of articles and um, reading through comments and yeah. um fun just to try to like create my own little world with all these like fictional outlets and fictional reporters and social media and then like try to have recurring reporters so you'd kind of get to know their voice and their personality a little bit in the book too and then like some common commenters throughout the book and yeah it was just pretty fun um to make up those people and it was really fun I just loved like trying to punctuate and capitalize and like so try to make it was really fun in copy edits because they were like, are you sure you don't want to capitalize all of these things? Does this need an apostrophe? I'm like, no, internet people, this is how they would type it. Let's leave yeah. it. Um, and so it was really, really fun. And especially if I was feeling like creatively, like still working out part of the story, mm -hmm. it would help like jump start a scene to be like, okay, what can I show in the rest of the world? Um what kind of uh, information and perspective can I give that you wouldn't get from Liv's head right. um, about her coast or about maybe the streaming service and like some context for the world that they're living in. And mm -hmm. also like the fandom aspect to show like the pressure on her potential ra relationship with ransom and like how many fans like for whom this is such a big deal. Like mm -hmm. well, I, my favorite stars are maybe getting together. Like mm -hmm. they better not screw it. You know, I so love kind of give you of that so they were some of my most favorite uh parts to write <laughs> yeah I'm sure like as a fangirl it was just so fun to read and see aspects of that part of like my favorite parts of life in a romance book it was so different yay thank you yeah sure. they were fun I've people seem to connect with it I, I've seen a lot of posts where they're like I love the interstitials yeah I'm like yes I always love the reader too and I just knew right off the bat that I wanted to go that way and so yeah Caitlin, like that was one of the first things she commented on. She's like, okay, I love these. And I just, they, they add so much. Let's keep them, you know, cause you never know, like if somebody's vision, yeah. the book will read. Yeah. yeah. They're great. I also particularly loved the tropes in this book and the use of tropes and how well done they are. And obviously you mentioned before there's forced proximity. It's friends to lovers. It's a celebrity romance. There's so much. Which second trope... chance. Like... Exactly. Second chance, of course. Like, what was your favorite trope to play with of all of the tropes in this book? Mm -hmm. I think I really loved, I love the for forced proximity aspect of it because, mm -hmm. um, you know, she's also dealing with like Liv is dealing with questions of her career as well. And so it's forced proximity in that aspect just for her as an actress too, like in her real life. So there's a couple layers of forced proximity going yeah. on and like, she feels like she has to do this um, to please the fans. And, you know, she's not even sure she wants to come back for the reunion. And so she's working through a lot of things, but especially like to add the ransom relationship layer to it um, and have them working through just like the tension of, okay, they have to film this like super special scene together and maybe they're going through some drama. Um, so like, forcing them to be in that situation, even though it's not entirely like pleasant at times for them. Yeah. <laughs> was really. Fun. Yeah. 
Reflecting back though on like the whole writing process, is there a particular scene or moment when you were writing it that you kind of were like surprised by? Like you weren't expecting that the story was going to go that way or that it would come out the Mm -hmm. way it had? Just because I feel like it's such a clear idea from like just us talking, like you had a very clear idea of what you wanted the story to be. I'm wondering if there's any like element of surprise there for you. Yeah. So I think one of the surprising things for me was like I already talked about like the screenplay aspects Mm -hmm. and how like the fake show kind of in some ways mirrors the real life aspects. And in some ways I did that on purpose, like with, um, you know, Liv's career choices. She's going through that in the fake show as well, but in a different Mm way. Um, But one aspect of it, like toward the end of the book, just with her sister, the person who plays her sister on the show, Sasha Kay, you know, moments in that fake scene that felt like they fell into place perfectly with like, where it fell in the book and like what Liv was going through in her real life that kind of helped bring about some realizations to kind of tie everything together. And I had not planned it that way, but it just felt like, oh, okay, this is a neat way to kind of propel toward the ending um, mm-hmm. that together better than I planned, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And there were, you know, there's some some scenes in in the trailers uh, between the two of them that were really fun to write. And at first, before I um, this came from a note from my editor, like I had them all like in a building, like in dressing rooms and not trailers. And my editor was like, I think they would probably have their own trailers on a film lot like that, a TV yeah. set lot. Yeah, you're right. You know, it probably wouldn't just be dressing rooms. And it's actually kind of more fun to write like trailer aspect. Yeah. And so um, working those revisions in like gave me so many more fun opportunities to like have some fun scenes inside the trailers. <laughs> yeah. I love um, it. Like a dressing room where it's just right in the hallway. It's kind of like they can sneak around a little more. But. Yeah. I loved <laughs> it. So now that this book is out yeah. there, and everyone could read it. Like, what has the feedback been like? Like, what are you hoping people take away from it? Like, what's the response been? Because I know that it's obviously different than what you've been writing before. Yeah, it has been overwhelmingly positive, uh, what I've seen of it. Um, I've been blown away just by the support and kindness of Instagram people and people on Facebook and my real life, too. Um, Just, it's been really fun to see them connecting with such a happy book. You know, I know there's definitely a place like heavier hard subject matter and I enjoy those books too or like a great thriller suspense clearly I love to read and write those um but it's been nice to see people just like say hey you know what this is like a really just fun happy book and I needed that right now because I've been stressed out it's an escape for a lot of people and um it was for me while writing it I had no expectations I had a lot of hopes when I was writing it but yeah for so long like for me and so It's been very exciting to see people connecting with the characters and with just the happiness of it. I love Um, that. Love to see like how many people love Brie and Ford, like the assistant and then one of the other actors on the show. Um, They were such fun characters to write. And so I've gotten a lot of great feedback about the two of them too. Um, And so so it's been really fun and an overwhelmingly fun experience putting this book in the world. I'm so excited for you. That's incredible. And now that the book is out, what are we working on next? Is there going to be anything else in this story world? Is there something completely new? Can you share anything? So I, when writing the book, like there's so many like creative women on the show or like in the book, Mm -hmm. just from actresses to writer directors to CEOs and, you know, um, pop stars, so Mm -hmm. many different like creative women that in the back of my head, like, I could write spinoff stories for probably 10 of them. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. Chance to do that. Um, I would be thrilled to, um, right now there's nothing official in the works on that front. Um, and I'd be able to speak more specifically about like what is in the works, but you'll have to watch my Instagram for that. I can say I am working on another adult rom-com. Love Um, it. So yeah. So hopefully we'll get to share more. Amazing. I'm very excited for you. I know everybody that has not yet picked up this book will really, really enjoy it. It just, as you said, it just provides so much levity and light and fun. And like, who doesn't want to just like suspend reality and like be a celebrity and like live in this world? Like I would die to be dating a hot actor, you know? So like, it was so much fun to put myself into Liv's shoes. 
Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. It was fun just imagining it, you know, too, and just be like, okay, what's the most fun place to escape in your head? All these places. <laughs> exactly. It was the best. And I read it on vacation, which made it even better because I was like actually taking a real vacation, but then my brain got a vacation too. And that's the best. That's so fun. I love seeing pictures of your vacation, by the way. It looked so just like. <laughs> Thank you. Relaxing. <laughs> it was very, very nice. But yeah. So anyways, congratulations on this book. I'm so excited for everyone to read it. And I cannot Thank wait you. to see what you do next. I will be staying tuned on your Insta to make sure I stay in the loop. Thank you so much. Um, it's great chatting with you. I really appreciate you having me on. And uh, it's been so great to your Instagram. So yeah. and thank you. Mm-hmm.